All right, so welcome to tonight's team call. Oh, I got really dark. And welcome, Anna. This is your first ever team call. Where are you? You got lost. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. So today is Monday 9th, 2015. We are officially beginning the second week of November. And tonight I just wanted to go over some of my tips on um, kind of managing your time and something called a power hour. If you've been a coach for a long time, you already know what this is. Um, so maybe this will be some good like brushing up training. Um, I know that for a long time, I kind of fell off of using my power hour and I was just kind of working all day and sometimes I still do. But for those of you that have another job or other stuff like school and just other obligations, having um, a system in place and using um, the power hour system is actually going to help you be more productive and be more efficient with your time because you don't have a lot of time. So um, I have not listened to this call. <laughs> Usually when I have our team calls and I talk about the national wake up call. I like to be able to give you guys my feedback and just to encourage you to listen to the call. But today um, it's been rough with the baby. So I, I didn't make enough time to listen to this call, but um, this is our national wake up call, Anna. And basically what this is, it's like our, um, it's like open up to the network. So there's like literally like 400,000 coaches in the network. And the cool thing is that Beachbody Corporate, um, every week on every Monday morning at 8 a.m. our time, Pacific Standard Time, they host this call. And it's like a training call for us. But it's from corporate. So every week, um, you know, corporate, people from corporate, the CEO and stuff, they'll hop on and they'll tell us like, you know, things that are going on within the company, like what product releases we have, just exciting stuff. And they keep us up to date with like the big stuff, like the products and stuff like that. And they always have, every week they have a top coach, someone that's been doing this for a long time or someone that's seen a lot of success in the business. They have them come on for like 15, 20 minutes and they usually cover a topic. So today, um, Scotty Hobbs was the coach that was on the call and he basically talked about overcoming fear. So it's kind of cool that every week we have this for free. Literally, you can just call in. And if you can't make it at that time, they have a recorded number. So I'll share with these, um, with this, this with you later. Um, but just so you guys know, um, so I didn't listen to this call. If any of you did, um, raise your hand. Did you guys, I don't know one's on the screens right now. Did anyone listen to the call? Not yet. <laughs> All right. So schedule it in. Um, so I, I probably won't listen to this till like Wednesday. But I'm excited to listen to it. Scotty Hobbs is one of my favorites. He's actually really popular on YouTube for us coaches. I guess he has a really um, he has a really good YouTube channel filled with like training for us coaches, like free training. He's a millionaire and he's been doing this for like close to five years now. Um, okay, so this is just a reminder um, our November challenge packs that we have going on the promotions. Um, so we have size and Shakeology, and then we have the size of Shakeology and Kickstart, which is just like the cleanse. And then we have the 21 day fix on sale again. And remember that they this month they're doing the tote bag again, so that's pretty cool. I've had a lot of people get on board because of the tote bag because it's free and it's a cute little bag. And then the 21 day fix extreme um, Shakeology Kickstart. So just the Kickstart, not the regular 21 day fix extreme. So this is just a little reminder for you guys. When you're talking. Okay. So, um, like I mentioned, I want to talk about, you know, kind of like managing your time and setting like time blocks in your weekly schedule and teaching you guys how to actually work your business. If you only had one hour a day. So there's this quote, you know, there's, there's not a lot to do every day within your beach body business, but the point is to actually do it. Because you can sit there and make this big old to-do list and you're, you just overwhelm yourself and stress yourself out and then you don't end up doing anything, right? So in order for you to grow this business, there actually isn't a lot of things to do. Um, the three vital behaviors of a coach is invite, 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 invite people to join you, invite people to learn more about what we do, be proof their products work, work out every day and drink Shakeology, and do personal development. Read books to keep you happy, <laughs> read books to keep you positive, read books to help you expand your mind and just be a positive influence to the people around you. Don't get stuck in learning mode. Always be in action mode and doing stuff. This is, this was me for like the first two years in my business. I was stuck in learning mode. I am an Emerald. So what that means is I'm, I'm naturally a researcher. I love learning. I love researching. 
I, I'm an observer. Like I learn by observing people. So I could sit there and watch tons of coaches on Facebook. I could sit there. I could watch, I could sit down for hours and watch videos on YouTube of like coaching and how to talk to people and how to invite people and how do I run the best challenge groups and how to, how this and that, like I could sit there forever. And I was stuck in learning mode, learning, learning, learning. Oh, I just need to learn everything. I need to soak it all up. I need to soak it all up. No, but that was the worst thing I could have ever done for my business because in the first two years, I didn't have a lot of growth because I did, you know, when you learn something, you need to apply it right away. Like if you go to an event, you go to super Saturday and you learn something the next day, you need to write a to-do list and say, okay, this week I'm going to implement this. This week I'm going to learn how to do this. And this week I'm going to try this. You need to apply it right away because otherwise you forget or you, you just get stuck in learning mode. And that's who I was for like so long. Like I just wanted to learn and learn and learn. And yeah, I learned a lot, but I wasn't in action mode. I got stuck in like, Oh, I, I need to watch this training. Oh, I need to listen to this call or, Oh, that's very important. It is. But so many times I'm being honest, like I'll sit there and listen to a call, watch a video training and write all my pretty notes. And then I put it away. And then I open it again the next day and watch another video and take some pretty notes. And I never actually sit down. It's crazy to think I have like four notebooks sitting right here filled, like filled because I've been a coach for three years. I've been to so many events. I've listened to so many coaches and so many videos and training calls and what have you. I've seen Danny Johnson live and I'm just now going back and like literally like some of our team calls, it's cool because I could just go back and like go through all of my notes that yeah, I was in learning mode for so long, but now I'm barely starting to be in action mode and I'm starting to, you know, put that into action and actually try it, see if it works for me or not. So I just want you guys to really like stay in action mode. If you don't know how to do something, teach yourself how to do it and then do it right away. Last week was my first time um, ever presenting the business live, like on, on like a live stream on YouTube. I've been practicing how to do that for so long. I, I watched coaches, like they have videos on YouTube, like how to present the business. And I, I taught myself and taught myself for so long and I was in learning mode. I should have been doing that a long time ago. And I finally did it last week. And I was like, oh my gosh, like why did it take me so long to do this? Like I seriously felt like such a badass. Like after I did that call, like I was like, nothing can stop me now. Like I, I should have been doing this a long time ago. I literally, I had like this high when I got off the call. And so that's why it's so important to stay in action mode every single week, every single day if you can. Do something that scares you. Um, so I like this quote from Jen Rohn. Don't mistake movement for achievement. It's easy to get faked out by being busy. But the question is, busy doing what? So ask yourself. Whenever you tell yourself in your mind, and you're like, oh, I'm just so busy. I don't have time for this. Ask yourself, you're, are you busy doing what? What are you doing? Are you busy watching your favorite TV show? Are you busy scrolling through your newsfeed knowing that you haven't done your power hour or reached out to anyone? So just ask yourself. So I really like that quote. It was kind of like a, like a reality check for myself too. Okay, so I want to teach you guys how to time block. So hopefully this doesn't overwhelm you. So just take your time to look at it. So basically this is what my schedule looked like when I used to work full time last year. I used to work full time at a daycare, nine to five job. That includes commuting. So I get it. I know what it feels like to have a full time job and still wanna work this business. But I still made it happen because now I'm here full time. Um, so this is kind of what my schedule looked like. Um, so the yellow line, Monday through Friday, basically means working out and drinking my Shakeology because that's part of one of our vital behaviors as a coach. You need to be working out and you need to be drinking Shakeology. And it sounds silly to schedule that in, but if you think about it, we're technically paid to do that. Okay, as coaches, we need to be working out and drinking Shakeology because we need to be proof that the products work. So that's technically part of our job description, okay? So you need to schedule that in and make it a priority. So for me, if I didn't work out and drink my Shakeology before work, it just didn't happen. I used to work with kids in daycare. I worked with like 20 crazy kids and I was drained by the end of the day. Like I'm a mom now to one, but when I was in daycare, I, I felt like I was a mom to 20 kids. So I'd get home from work and I'd literally just lay there on the couch. Like I don't even want to cook. So you think I was, did you think I was going to get my workout in at night? No. So I had to make that sacrifice and I had to get up at 5:45 AM change and then work out. You know, and so I, type, I would typically get in my workout at 6 a.m. Depending on what workout I was doing, it could last anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. I'd shower, get ready, drink my Shakeology because it was super quick in the morning. That's another thing, too. A lot of people are going to give you excuses like, oh, well, I don't have time to make breakfast. You have five minutes to make Shakeology because it takes me five minutes 
sometimes even less to make my shake, right? So I would do it in the morning. Um, so that was a priority. I scheduled it in. And then I drive my little butt to work. And in my car, I, I literally like my, my work was like five, 10 minutes away, but that was five, 10 minutes that I could listen to something. Another thing that I always hear is, oh, I don't really have time to be listening to calls. I don't have time to be listening to podcasts or books. Yes, you do, but you have to make the time. You're never just going to magically find time and think, oh, today I have just, I have so much time on my hands. No, you need to schedule it in. So I knew that I was going to be in the car. Instead of listening to all the gossip that they play on the radio, I would pop in a call, a national wake-up call or a recorded call or a podcast, something. So I'd get, you know, anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes of something positive before I'd go into work. And then that was my schedule. I would work from 7 to 10, and then my lunch was at 11. And my lunch, for like the first half of my, um, the year that I was there, I only, I only had a 30-minute lunch. Um, so in those 30 minutes, you better believe I was working on my phone and eating at the same time because I was like, I didn't like my job. I didn't want to be there. I hated my job. So instead of sitting on my phone and just like going through Instagram, doing nothing, I was on my phone actually working, talking to people, messaging them, doing what I could and eating at the same time. Did I feel stressed sometimes? Yes. It wasn't pretty. Sometimes I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not even done eating. But it, it was those little things that I did every single day that now are paying off. Like I'm so happy that I'm not there anymore. And so then again, my lunch and my lunch, where do you see the blue line? It would end. And then I would work from 12 to five and I wouldn't get off till 5 PM. I was already drained, tired. Again, I'd drive back home and I'd try to listen to something positive, something that was going to help me grow in my business, something that was going to help me expand my mind, something positive. Um, so then I'd get home around 5:30. So from 5:30 to eight was kind of, um, you know, what do I have on here? So dinner, chores, husband time, relaxing time. That was just kind of me time. You know, I'd cook, I'd eat with Aiden and just hang out on the couch, watch TV, whatever. And then at 9 p.m., depending, some days it would be earlier. If, if it's like, you know, if it was like 8 p.m. and we were done doing whatever I had to do around the house or cooking or whatever, I would schedule in another power hour. So you see that here I was technically working two hours a day when I had my full-time job. Um, sometimes depending, like, again, if on a Wednesday, like I didn't have laundry to do or something and I had more time to myself, I would use that time to extend my power hour. So I'd make my power hour longer. So I would talk to more people during that time. So hopefully this kind of gives you guys, um, an idea of my schedule right now is like crazy, um, now cause of the baby, but like, this is for you that are still working full time or if you're in school or you have other things going on. Um, and you're not doing this full time yet, like I am, it's still very doable. And honestly, like I've heard that the busiest people are the ones that get the most done because they're the ones that don't have a lot of time on their hands. They're like, if I only have one hour, they're going to make sure that they make that one hour super time, like effective, like you're going to use it and you're going to get a lot done in one hour. So this is how you time block. So ask yourself, get a planner. If you don't have one already, you guys can get these on Amazon, Target, Walmart, super cheap. Um, this one's my favorite because um, I just like that I can actually like type, like I can, you know, write in like my numbers, like I can write in like 7 a.m., 10 a.m. Because some um, planners don't have that flexibility, I guess. So I got this one from Office Depot. It was $20. This is, um, I've had it for two years. It's the same planner. Like every year I order the same one. Um, so I, I get it online. If you guys want the one that I have, I can send you guys a link for that. But look at your schedule. Look at your week. Okay, if you have to schedule everything in, meal planning, going here, going there, have an appointment here, you need to schedule everything in. If you're not a pen to paper person, do it on your phone. But you need to learn how to time block. Look at your schedule and ask yourself, where do I have, you know, at least one hour of un uninterrupted time? If it's not during the day, maybe you need to sacrifice and get up earlier. Or maybe you need to sacrifice and stay up later. But um, just look at your schedule and see what you have going on and where can you time block? Where can you block time to work your business? And if it needs to be in pockets throughout the day, then so be it. That's I can't sit down for three to four hours anymore and work like I used to. Like I literally work throughout the day in pockets, like whenever Camilo lets me or whenever he's sleeping, but I still try my best to block in that time. Okay. So this is, um, what essentially power hour is my coach Lindsay came up with this system um close to two years now and so she has a very 
uh, a much more extensive training on this power hour. It's on her YouTube. It's a little bit more different than what I, I mean, this, it's the same picture. This is what she has, but I'm just kind of, I'm going to go through it a little bit different. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to watch hers too. So she basically has on here, thriving businesses are built one conversation at a time. Don't overestimate the event and underestimate the process. Okay. So if you only have one hour a day, this is what you're going to do. You're going to use a timer on your phone and you're going to set a timer for 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and then 20 minutes. So that essentially leads up to an hour. So what are you going to do in the first 20 minutes of your power hour? You are going to spend time sending outgoing conversations and messages. Um, okay. So she has on here this quote, if you always have outgoing, you'll always have incoming. And that is so freaking true. Like you cannot always expect people to message you. You can't sit there and just wait for like 50 messages to hit your inbox. Like we would love that, but you have to get to a point in your business where you're like a top coach and you have a lot of followers on Instagram. A lot of people following on Instagram for that. to. Ha I mean, on Facebook for that to happen. Um, it gets to the point if, you, if that's ever your goal to be a top coach, it'll get to the point where you won't need to message so many people because people are going to be coming to you because of your success. But until then you need to be courageous and you need to have courage to reach out to people. So if you always have outgoing, if you're always sending out messages to people, you will always have something coming back in. You'll always have someone to work with, someone to talk with, someone to build a relationship with. So how can you, do, how can you do your outgoing? Social media is the, is the number one thing that I use 100%. I build my business on social media. Um, you can text someone or you can call them. If you love being on the phone, then call them, you know, and that's your way of catching up with someone. And it can be as simple as, hey, Sally, how's it going? You know, you crossed my mind the other day and I wanted to get back in touch. What's new? For me, on Mondays, it's the best. Like, for me, I love Mondays. Hold on. Here, sit right here. I feel like Mondays is like the best day to follow up because I could be like, hey, how was your weekend? What did you do over the weekend? Did you do anything fun? It's like the perfect time. And then on Fridays, hey, what are your plans for the weekend? So just keep it simple. You don't have to like over complicate this. Just talk to people. How would you talk to someone in person? Hey, how was your weekend? You know, I started you to go watch that movie. How was that movie? So just, you know, the goal is to build rapport. Your goal is to build trust and to strengthen that relationship. You want to say hi? Hey. Yeah? <laughs> say hi. Look. Look. Okay. Are you going to let me finish? Okay. So those are the first 20 minutes. That is you sending out messages to new people or to people that you haven't talked in a long time. Okay. So for the second 20 minutes, you are going to be following up and inviting. So here's this quote. If you never ask, the answer will always be no. Now let that sink in. If you never ask someone, the answer will always be no. So what this means is as coaches, as new coaches, it's really, really, really common and normal to be shy and to be fearful of inviting someone or, oh, like I'm kind of scared. I, I mean, I feel like this girl would be perfect for my challenge group, but I'm really scared to invite her. But if you never actually ask her, hey, have you ever considered joining my challenge group? The answer is always going to be no. You have to be willing to ask people. Stop. No, no, no. You're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> Give me a second. Why are you being like that today? Huh? What do you want? You want this? Look. 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 Okay. So on here she has, okay, so you can say, say Sally. I've been meaning to ask you, have you ever considered joining one of my challenge groups? Or have you ever considered learning more about what I do as a coach? So that's basically what following up and inviting is. So you're following up with people that you've been talking to. Okay, so the goal, you know, when you're talking to someone, you're trying to see if there's a need that you can fulfill. If people are, when you're talking to someone, you know, through messages or text or whatever call, um, can I get to? Oh. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay, so where did I leave off? Okay, so when you're following up with someone, the goal, you know, when you're talking to someone is to build a relationship and 
when you're talking to someone and you're actually posting on your social media, like you're working out, you're drinking psychology, you're changing your life, you're doing all these happy, positive things, organically, some of that stuff is going to come up in the conversation. You know, people are going to ask you, so what's that workout you're doing? Um, so this is where you can come in and kind of see like if someone is presenting you a need, if people are like, oh, I'm just so busy all the time. I'm so stressed. I don't like my job. Okay. That could be a red flag and you could present them the business and be like, Hey, you know, my coach Jackie, you know, was working full time at a daycare and now she does this full time and she loves what she does. Right. You just keep it simple. Um, and there's been many coaches that have left their jobs because someone else was courageous enough to be like, Hey, I'm doing this whole beach body coaching thing. Like, are you, you know, would you take a look at it? Are you interested in learning more? Um, so that's when you're following up with people you're following up and, you know, kind of just, I feel like I'm repeating myself, <laughs> um, but you're either you're following up with your, like your past messages and, you know, see where it's at or you're inviting them. You always want to be moving the conversation to the next step and moving it forward. You eventually want to invite that, that person because chances are, to be honest, like the people that you're talking to, everyone wants to get healthier. Everyone wants to feel better about themselves. It's not always just about losing weight. Um, a lot of people want to increase their energy. A lot of people want to find a workout that they actually enjoy. A lot of people don't want to work out for an hour. We have, we have so much to offer as coaches. Like it's not just about weight loss. We have, you know, if, there's a lot of people that would love to get out of debt. There's a lot of people that would like to have more money for organic groceries. Like someone can start coaching, you know, say they already have a full-time job. Someone can start coaching part-time and start earning an extra hundred dollars a week. And they could be using that for the organic groceries that they want to buy. So we all, we have a lot to offer. Okay. So, you know, when you're following up with someone and you're inviting them, Hey, have you ever considered joining one of my groups? Have you ever considered learning more about what I do as a coach? Or, you know, there's, she has on here like fit club, home party. I don't do home parties. If you want to do that, you can, but I don't like doing that. Um, 30 day push is essentially, it's just like a free program online where, um, you get free daily videos and Shalene Johnson teaches you how to set goals. Um, so you, uh, coaches in the past have actually like invited people that struggle with like goal setting. Like, Hey, do you want to do this free group with me? It's for 30 days and we're going to learn how to set goals. That's just kind of a, a new way of like helping people. It's free and you can make new friends that way. And um, people will start to trust you because you're, you're saying, Hey, there's this free 30 day program online where every day in your email, you get this video from Shalene Johnson. That's about five minutes or less and she teaches us how to like reverse engineer and set big goals so that's just kind of inviting people to get involved with you super saturday event you can invite people to that you can invite people to have coffee with you and just kind of chat um so there's a lot of things that you can invite people to do but once you invite them you want to be you want to make sure that you're using a third-party tool to share information with people when people come to me and they want to know more about what I'm doing as a coach, what the 21 day fix, I, I don't sit there and type everything. I, I'll tell them my experience, but um, research in business shows that it's much more effective for someone to watch a video and let the experts do the talking. Okay. Cause I'm not a beach body expert. I'm not a 21 day fix expert. I, I'm not Autumn Calabrese. I'm not the trainer that made, you know, the program. I'm not the creator of Shakeology. So I'm just the messenger. I'm sharing, you know, information with people like, Hey, this is what's worked for me. You know, the video is going to tell you everything about it. Cause sometimes those new coaches, you're scared. You're going to have people say, Hey, so what's Shakeology? And you're going to be like, uh, like you're, cause there's just so much in Shakeology. Like I don't even know all the ingredients. So I share with people, Hey, like watch this video. You know, this video is going to tell you everything you need to know about Shakeology and how it can help you. So that's what I mean by a third party too, is when you're following up with people, inviting them, you always want to be using videos. Um, so I can obviously help you if you're a newer coach, I can help you with that too. But this is just kind of like a pressure. And then the last 20 minutes of your power hour is for you to work on your to-do list. Um, on here, she doesn't have, but for me on my to-do list every single day, I have birthday messages. For me, that's, um, I, I feel like I've made it a priority because I have actually opened up a lot of doors simply by messaging someone instead of posting to their Facebook wall. I will message them and say, Hey, you know, I just wanted to personally message you and, and wish you a very happy birthday. You know, I hope that you have a great day with your loved ones, something simple like that. And I thought I've honestly, like even last week I had someone like message me back and she's like, wow. She's like, I I'm so happy that you messaged me. She's like, that's so thoughtful. She's like, not like no one in my family 
like messaged her. Like no one texted her, no one called her and no one messaged her. And here I was just someone that it was on my to-do list, you know, to message whoever's birthday that was that day. And I messaged her and she was like, so appreciative. No, that doesn't mean that, oh, I'm just going to try to sell her something. And that's not, that's not the point. The, the point here is to build relationships and to be kind and to be like, um, like a positive light in people's lives. So that is something that's on my to-do list. But other things that are on your to-do list is stuff that's going to help you, you know, get to your push goal. Like what's your big push goal with Beachbody? Ask yourself, what do I need to do to get there? Okay. So if your goal is to hit success club five, reverse engineer, how many people in a month do you have to talk to? So write that on your to-do list. Personal development counts um, as your to-do list. Reading at least 10 minutes every single day or listening. If you don't like reading, you can listen to a book. Um, training webinars, you know, teaching yourself how to run a challenge group, how to start a challenge group, stuff like that. That should be on your to-do list. Connecting with coaches if you want to start a blog, blogging, video if you want to start, you know, YouTube, making videos, social media. Checking email, um, planning events, and editing pictures. That is at the last. So hopefully you guys can see that the first 40 minutes, the point here is like you need to be talking to people. If you're not talking to people, your business is not going to grow. You can, it's very easy to just kind of say, oh, I need to edit these pictures, and I need to check my email, I need to do this and that. But you need to eat that frog, and you need to do what's scary first, which is talking to people. And reaching out to new people that you've never talked to and inviting them and following up with them and just sharing information with them. Um, so hopefully, you know, in one hour you could see like literally how much you can get done and test yourself this week. Seriously, don't wait till next week. Sit down and do a power hour. Set a timer on your phone. The first 20 minutes, outgoing conversations. Make a list of people that you want to talk to that, that day and reach out to them. Reach out to them through social media, through a text or a call. Once those 20 minutes end, set another, set another 20 minutes for you to follow up with old messages or old people and to invite people to learn more about what you're doing as a coach or ask people, you know, have you ever considered doing one of my groups? Because why? Because you're posting about it on your social media. So once you're actually talking to people and building a relationship with them, you've earned the right to ask them, have you ever considered it? 99% of the time, a lot of people have considered your groups, but they're just waiting for you to actually um, invite them <laughs> and invite them personally and talk to them about it. And then this, the last 20 minutes of your power hour is your to-do list and like kind of the busy work. And um, it's really easy for us to do the busy work first. We like doing that stuff because it's more fun. <laughs> um, so make sure you're still doing your to-do list. But does this help? I feel like I went really fast. Um, but this is being recorded and you guys can always go back and um, take a screenshot of this. Um, but this is what I did um, when I was working full time. I didn't have a lot of time. But um, eventually, you know, my boss moved my 30 minute lunch to an hour. For moms, this is um, power hour. I call it nap time hustle. <laughs> when he's taking a nap, it's time for me to do my power hour. And I usually do them really late at night when he's sleeping too. That's when I get most of my work done, but it's definitely doable. Trust me. There are so many coaches in network that are, they're still like lawyers and doctors and they're still doing this. Um, it's very doable. You just have to find a system that works for you. You actually have to do it. You need to like have focused, like focused work time, you know, not don't have your family members or your husband or fiance or people talking to you. Like, no, like you need to have one focused hour to yourself, even if it's just one a day. You're going to feel so much more accomplished and happier with yourself. You're going to be like, yes, I got so much done. It was just an hour, but that's all I have right now. Um, so I, I, I guess here I, I had actually broken it down a little bit, but when I was creating this, I had my little monkey over here. So I basically just put, in order to experience growth, you must work from a list and reach out to new people. Otherwise, when you're talking to the same people over and over again, which we, we, which happens so often because we get comfortable. We're like, Ooh, we've been talking to this person. Let me just, how was this weekend? <laughs> what did you do last week? And you start to like manage those conversations and you're not expanding. You're not talking to new people. You need to be talking to new people every single week and don't get in this mode of where you're kind of just managing the same people, like the same conversations and like, you're not reaching out to anyone new. So you're not going to experience growth. Don't log into Facebook and work from your notifications. That little red thing you see on your phone, 
don't work from notifications. You're supposed to check your notifications after your power hour, after all of the things that you need to be doing are done. Then you can have fun and check your notifications. Other than that, you should not be checking your notifications. Um, another thing too is don't work from your inbox. Don't be that person. Don't be me. I used to um, log on to Facebook and immediately go to my messages and just answer whatever message was in there. That is not the way to be working your business. You need to treat this like a business. Um, don't show people, don't give people the example that you're open 24 hours because you're not. You are not a Walmart. You are a person and you have a life. Um, you decided to start an online business, but that does not mean that you're open 24 seven. So whenever you log into Facebook, if you're not setting business hours, that's something that you should highly consider and set business hours and work during those business hours and respect yourself as a business owner. Um, and so like when you log on to Facebook, if you haven't worked that day, don't go straight to your inbox. Look at your power hour and look at your to-do list. What do you need to get done that day? If you haven't done your power hour, what do you need to do first? You need to set, you need to send outgoing messages first before going into your inbox and working from your notifications. Because I used to do that. And what happens when you do that, when you're just on your phone, um, you know, going through your messages, you forget about people, people fall through the cracks. If you're not writing down their names, you're gonna forget about them. It's gonna happen, it's happened to me. So learn from my mistakes. Be intentional when going on Facebook. Again, work from a list, reach out to new people, form them, which means just, you know, um, building a relationship with them and eventually you can invite them. Break the ice by being courageous and messaging people first. So just always keep that in mind. Um, most of you on this team are on this team because I was intentional and I was courageous and I reached out to you and I asked you to be a part of this with me. Had I not asked you, you probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> so just always keep that in mind. And I think that's all I have. I thought I had one more slide. I think I have one more slide. Give me a second. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here is a side by side comparison of what your to do list should look like. Not like exactly, but what should be of high value and what should be of low value. So high value should be your power hour, creating new contacts, looking for new people, social media presence, posting at minimum three times a day. Connecting with coaches if you're bringing on new coaches and clients, people that you're bringing into your groups and you're helping them get results. Personal and professional development because if you're not doing personal and professional development, you're, you're simply just not growing as a person. Um, so what, thing, what are things that are of low value? Checking your email and text. That's fun, but it's low value. It literally offers low value to you and your business. Housework. I know that housework is important, but I mean, if you guys have big goals and you want to help your family get out of bed or whatever your goals are, sometimes housework needs to be put off. I have a pretty messy room behind me, but doing this call is a lot more important to me right now and housework is just kind of of low value today. <laughs> newsfeed and profile creep, you know, being a profile creep and checking your newsfeed, that's of low value. It's something fun to do. It's something that you can still do as a coach when you're looking for new people to talk to and looking for new coaches, but it's something that offers low value. Photo and video editing, which is something that I love doing. I love editing pictures. I could sit there for hours and edit a picture. It's just something that I love doing, but that is something that's not of high value for me and my business. Research, um, hello, number one researcher here, and it makes me procrastinate, like she put on there, procrastination at its finest. You sit there and you're in research learning mode and you're not doing anything. You're not actually in action. You're not putting anything into action. Other people's agenda. So Shalene Johnson talks a lot about this. And if you don't know who she is, um, Shalene Johnson is a creator of Turbo Fire, Turbo Kick, Pio, um, and a lot of other things. She's super awesome. She talks about learning how to say no. Um, and I am naturally a people pleaser. That's just who I am. Like it's part of my personality. And it's really hard for me to say no. So say I have a busy day and I have stuff to do and I haven't done my power hour and all that stuff. And someone asks me for a favor, it's really hard for me to say no. And if someone asks me for a favor and I'm actually able to help them and I say yes, that's me giving into other people's agendas. Okay, and so Shalene Johnson talks about this. Don't be afraid to say no. 
Like you have your own life and you have things going on. You have your to-do list and you have big goals. So when you look at your to-do list and you haven't gotten, you know, most of the important things done, how do I explain it? Um, you're throwing me off here. You're throwing me off. Um, well, yeah, I just learn how to say no. If you're busy, just learn how to say no. I've, I've had to learn the hard way, but as, as I started growing as a coach, I had a lot of people coming to me for like other people from other co like teams and stuff and asking me for help with like other stuff. But that was me getting into other people's agendas. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> All right. So I think I'll just leave it at that. Um, let me stop the recording.